So I think it's so interesting that you led with the mining story, right? Because 5% of GDP is a huge deal. So I guess you can't really talk about the state of Panama's economy without talking about the mining story. Is that right? I agree with that. And I'll be happy to expand. Just a quick disclaimer. We share shareholders or we're a related company with the mines lawyers, right? So the mines lawyers, the law firm is called Morgan & Morgan. It's a related company to MMG Bank. So that's an important disclosure, I think, because I might be a little bit conflicted when you talk about the mine. The mine, well, as, as I did, as you mentioned, as I mentioned, it's around 5% of GDP or it was 5% of GDP. It employs around 50,000 people directly and indirectly, which is a huge amount for when you look at Panama's economy, it's just 4 million people. And it's 2 million of economically active people. So it's a lot of people that was employed indirectly and directly in the mine. It has had huge positive effects for the economy. I know, for example, a, a good story that I like to tell is Caterpillar. So CAT, they, 400 people, around 40% of their workforce, they fired just because the mine shut down. It was their largest client by far, but I'm talking orders of magnitude compared to the second next client. And we're talking about, they also provide the canal with manufacturing, with equipment, with heavy equipment, but the mine was just too large, right? And it's actually quite problematic for us. Growth expectations for 2024 were around 4 to 5%. Now they're around close to 1% because of obviously the mine is shaving so much of the economy. So what does that do then to Panama's government budget, right? Because I imagine that's a lot of lost revenue, not just from the mine directly, but like you said, 50,000 people out of 2 million workers, that's like 2.5% unemployment overnight. So that really you know, messes around with whatever models for government revenue and spending they had. So what happens next? That's a good question. One important thing to mention, Panama is one of the few Latin American economies that are in investment grade. So it's Chile, it's Uruguay, it's Panama, that's about it. I mean, Brazil is, I think it's double B plus now, but it still sucks yeah. investment grade. So we're talking one of the few countries where institutional money flows into is Panama because it's still investment grade and it, it pays quite good yields. So that's the first thing that I have to mention is the negative watch that now the country has because now it's possibly going to lose its investment grade status. And I think that's the first negative. Obviously, it increases your cost of debt. The government was spending around 8% of the budget to service its debt. Now it's close to 17%. So it's more than double. I think that's the first effect that I would mention. The second effect, like you say so, it's the tax raises just because of how you... Well, Panama, first of all, has, I think, a pretty friendly tax regime for employees. It's not as punitive as other economies. I think all in is for, let's say, good earners is around 20 to 25% of your salaries. And I'm talking about social security, income taxes, and then educational taxes, which are three main taxes, right? That get charged to your employment. We had to right-size our budget for 2024 a budget was presented, it was around $32 billion, and it got cut down to $30 billion. So it was close to 10% of reduction just because of the mine and, and the new reality, right? I think also an important thing to mention, there's elections in Panama in 2024 in May. So we're going to have a government change. And I think the new government, most of the business community is expecting for the new government to come up with a deal with the mine for us to not go into arbitrage where we're probably going to lose an international arbitrage against the mine. Something similar to Pakistan, where they also had a similar case and a mine that they shut down and they lost it and they had to restart the mine. So I think we want to restart the mine before we get to that point. So help me understand then, I mean, what was the argument for shutting down the mine? I mean, who actually benefits? Because mathematically, it sounds crazy, right? To just cut 5% of GDP overnight. So who benefits, yeah. if anybody, or was it just... Emotional. I mean, what was the other side arguing that was that, in favor that's of shutting a great down? Question. Who benefits? And I'm not even quite sure I can answer that question because I don't really know. <laughs> Plainly, nobody benefits economically. Actually, we're all way worse. The first thing that I'll mention, the mine is in a corridor, right? Let's say when you look at Chile, the Atacama Desert, where most of the mines are at, it's just arid terrain, right? Panama, it's in the middle of a jungle. So... The first thing that I mentioned, it's around 20,000 acres of just woodland that got destroyed. But this was already done, right? Surprisingly, a lot of people didn't know there was a mine in Panama until this year. That's actually quite shocking. 
I think the madness of the masses, it's a good point to talk about. The government has done a lot of things that were not the best things that they could have done. So people have been extremely critical of this administration. And the government had to pass a new law contract because the old contract was declared in constitution in mind. They passed it through Congress. The contract was actually signed a Friday evening, which is actually quite problematic. Why would you sign a contract on an evening of a Friday? Then it would put it put into law and then right after it, just everybody went to riot. It's a little bit similar to what happened in Chile when they increased the subway five cents and then the whole country went up to flames. There's just so much economic disparity that I think people are too unhappy. So they see any action by the government as an action that is negative for them. So everybody started rioting. The mine was a good, let's say, banner to rally with because people were critical of the government's doing, not actually of the mine. People don't really know anything about the mine. They just mm-hmm. knew the mine was related to the government, so they were against the government, they were against the mine. And I think that 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 worked out like that. But no, nobody nobody benefits really. Nobody has benefited from this, right? And it's extremely uncertain where we're at right now. But I think the positive, I think everything has calmed down. People are now thinking, okay, we're shutting the mine down. Now what's going to happen? And now when we hear what needs to happen to shut a mine down, the dollars that you have to spend, the possible arbitrage, what would happen to the country, people are now backtracking and now saying, okay, let's just negotiate something else. They just keep the mine open. So there's, that's where we're at. So you think then, obviously, it's going to be a huge campaign issue this year for the presidential election. And you think pro mine, it's the campaign issue, I guess, right? Well, you have candidates that are against the mine. Yeah. They're trying to harness that vote. And there are candidates that are a little bit more realistic saying, hey, there's already the mine is already there. We need to operate it. We need to work with a solution that in 30, 40, 50 years, we have a plan to shut it down and do something with that 10,000 or 20,000 acres. So that's that campaign thing where you know what's better for everybody. But people are so against it emotionally that neg- or against mine, the anti-mine candidate might harness enough votes. But when they get to power, they're probably get, going to hit the reality, right? It's a classic Latin American issue where you have a candidate campaigning for something that you know it's impossible to, to do, just like Petro did in court. Interesting. Yeah. So anything else about the mine you think is worth talking about that we, that we didn't cover? No, I don't think so. I think, I mean, we can talk about the mine for hours. I, I joke because like I said, Panama doesn't get much international coverage, but the mine did. I mean, I, that's probably the biggest story out of Panama that I can remember since I've been covering Latin America. We were, in, I think, in every newspaper possible. And actually, it's a great mine when you look at environmentally what they've done. First one to murals is replanting whatever they destroy in the environment. They're replanting it elsewhere. We have a ton of issues of illegal, illegal activities or illegal mining activities in Panama. So this would just become, and I think one of the main issues that we talk about is if you leave this mine pit open, people can extract gold from the mine. They're just going to have an illegal operation in the mine. It's too large for you to take care of anything like this big, right? It's 10,000, 20,000 acres. Right. So you have to pay to guard it if you're not going to use it, right? Because <laughs> people just totally. steal it. They say the cost to keep it shut down is between 20 to $50 million a month. A month? A month. That's a lot of money to do nothing with, right? That is a lot of money to do nothing. For a government with would, what? You, you just said a $30 billion dollar budget, right? $600 million a year out of $30 yeah. billion is a lot of money. Crazy. So yeah, I think it's, too it one, of the reasons, one of the reasons one of the reasons got so much zero. generating zero dollars, right? And it could be, right? It could be generating income. But yeah, I think one of the reasons too it was so interesting is because one of the most famous you know, mining stocks, Franco Nevada, it was a huge portion of their revenue, the royalty and streaming company. And they're as well followed as any yep. mining stock in the world. So there were investors all over the world that saw 30% of revenue disappear overnight. So they were paying attention. Yeah. <laughs> it is crazy. 